Hello, everybody. My name is John Joyce. Um, my co-contributor here, Tim Swanson, can be with us. He's actually doing a presentation at an SM Con, uh, which is just on the other side over here. So it's just me. Um, a little bit on uh, this slide template. Um, uh, this slide template is from um, the Network Service Mesh Con template. So what you're seeing here is the contributors, uh, or I'm sorry, the um, the sponsors of NSMCon, so uh, that's why they're listed here uh, prominently on this slide deck. Okay. So uh, first, what is uh, Network Service Mesh? Well, it's a CNCF sandbox project. I think it's been a sandbox project for about nine months now, approximately. Um, and it's really trying to focus a little bit more on uh, layer two and layer three use cases. Um, and these would be use cases that are sort of that the typical CNI uh, would not solve. So it's really focusing more on layer two and layer three. And that's, that, that layering is where it's contrasts with uh, like app service mesh or service mesh as you guys are all hearing about today. Um, so it, it, it tries to uh, provide these kind of properties, uh, uh, allow heterogeneous network connections, exotic protocols, uh, make tunneling as a first class citizen for those cases that require it. Um, it's policy driven and it's really trying to bring some of these layer two, layer three uh, complex networking into um, in, in, to developers in a cloud native way. So that's its kind of main goal. Okay, so um, what is the value proposition? Well, it's um, really trying to allow uh, complex networking to be brought to a developer very simply. So they don't have to, they can specify complex networking in very, very simple terms. And I'll get to this in a little bit uh, later, how exactly they do that. Um, and it, it does this by kind of trying to comp, uh, encapsulate the complexity of the networking within something called NSEs or network service endpoints. So these are constructs within uh, the network service uh, mesh um, framework that allows you to put all that networking complexity um, into those elements and uh, uh, kind of contain it and keep it away from uh, developers and other people that want a very simple view of how this all gets put together. Um, it's also um, uh, maybe uh, not everybody's use cases, but there are uh, many use ca people that are interested in um, uh, cloud uh, um, container network uh, functions and container network function virtualization and the chaining that happens with uh, those um, types of functions. So um, it's also very useful there because it allows you to be very novel and unique w uh, compared to what the CNI offers, which is a very standard um, um, uh, standardized way that you would connect these pods. Um, so the biggest contrast is the, the one I've highlighted there at the end uh, in red, which is that uh, network service mesh really tries to focus more at uh, layer two and layer three. And um, while um, um, you know, uh, the, the service meshes that you guys are talking about today, app, uh, what I sometimes like to call app service mesh because I'm working in both worlds, is um, focuses more on the layer seven experience. Okay, so how does this work a little bit? This is, um, I only have 10 minutes here, so I won't be able to get into a lot of detail. I'll go through this, these slides pretty quick. But the idea is that it takes a, a workload or an application and it's able to stitch in um, network services, that what I represent here as a network service endpoint, this particular network service endpoint I've characterized as like a firewall. So it's able to stitch those network service endpoints into a connection between workloads. And these, the, 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 the stitching can be arbitrary, I mean, ar not, NSM is able to allow an arbitrary stitching. Of course, the stitching that you want would be defined by how you layer and how you, how you have hierarchically created your network services. So in this particular case, um, th there's a desire to have like a firewall, um, a DPI device and a router between these two workloads. It's kind of arbitrary uh, where those workloads may sit, whether they're in the same cluster, across clusters, across clouds. Um, the, all that is uh, sort of immaterial to the actual way this is put together. So here's a, a bit of a, a drill down into the components that are involved with network service mesh, and I'm not going to be able to do full 
uh, diligence to this, you know, uh, in the amount of time I have to try to explain this. Uh, but the idea here is you have um, you have network service clients, or uh, which are which are labeled here as NSCs. Um, they go they run alongside the application pod. Um, they they also generally are inserted as a sidecar, as uh, as I heard you guys were talking about a little earlier. Um, and then um, there's the network service endpoints themselves, which are shown um, in green. Uh, those are the things that provide the, the actual uh, uh, complex networking uh, capabilities. The network service endpoint implementation and details are not defined as part of the network service mesh project. They can be brought in um, uh, by any um, companies, third parties, other open source groups, uh, the actual implementation of those is not defined or restricted by the network service mesh project itself. Um, and then, th then there's, a, there's a bit of a control plane represented here by um, the network service registry and the network service manager. The network service manager is the, the component responsible for doing the stitching, the stitching from the workloads using vWires over to the network service endpoints, chaining together potentially network service endpoints. Um, and the registry is the, uh, uh, the, the component that sort of keeps track of uh, where these network services are, where they have registered themselves, where they're available to be stitched in. Uh, and then there's a data plane, and the data plane itself, um, uh, a lot of the uh, NSM data plane right now is based on FDIO, um, but that's a switchable, uh, pluggable module. It could be based on um, other technologies as well. So um, here's, uh, for many of you, this is probably the most important thing, which is how do I actually request a network service? So from a workload's perspective, it's really, really simple. All they need to do is provide an annotation that says, hey, I want that network service. And the network service itself um, can uh, uh, be, be hierarchical. So it consists of you know, a, a number of sub-network services. So it can be actually a very complex ex, um, object in the end. But the pod itself just says, hey, I want that network service. Then you have, in this particular case, it's a simple network service firewall that's saying, hey, I implement that network service. That ends up getting registered via NSM and allows it to be stitched together. So um, this is, um, I'm an Istio contributor. Uh, I recently started contributing to uh, NSM. So this is one of the things that um, we did to show how these two things go, uh, play together, okay? So what I did was um, we took a, a network service to Poly, a network service, uh, um, um, an, an, an NSM network service endpoints. We put together a topology that stitched those together um, across, uh, uh, you know, arbitrary clusters across arbitrary clouds. And what we did is we put Istio on top of that. So in that particular model, we have NSM providing all sorts of interesting uh, layer two, layer three connectivity. Connectivity, it's not just via CNI. Um, we can put firewalls, we can put VPN tunnels, we can put all sorts of things in between those endpoints. And on top of that, we put Envoy and we uh, then uh, give all that information to Envoy to control, uh, give, so the configuration gets pushed out and uh, that shows what we have. And since I'm running out of time, um, this is, uh, you can contact me on uh, Slack. Um, I'm active both Istio and NSM, and uh, there's some references to the NSM collateral. That's it.